Okay. So then um, that's going to be uh, our quarterly presentation for um, the roadmap of Op Social. Um, we can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. So uh, this is going to be for the new year, for the new quarter, um, for uh, quarter one, 2021. Um, so I'm going to give a quick intro into the agenda. So we're going to start with a quick update about the current goals, then look into the quarterly goals for Q1 21. I'm going to give an overview over the focus points there, and then we can go through the three, uh, currently three main parts of Open Social, which is going to be the core development, the extensions, and uh, the decoupled work we're doing. Um, I'm gonna also going to guide you a bit through what else we're working on in terms of uh, initiatives and projects, and then there's a room for uh, some questions. So um, the updates about uh, current goals of the quarter, fourth quarter of 2020. Uh, 20. So what we discussed uh, also last time, um, you're going to give see it back. I'm going to go quickly through it, not on detail, just more the highlights. Um, in general, we're getting ready for delivering the features for the Open Source 10.0 version, which is at the moment scheduled for January 27th, 2021. So for the distro release, uh, this is going to be um, uh, a pretty big update. So I'll not go through it. Uh, you're going to get in time um, the... Um, updates and release notes for from uh, the customer success managers and from the teams. So um, you're gonna see, I think, the highlights in the next slide where we can quickly look through it, but the details is are, are gonna be in the, in the um, uh, release notes, sorry. Then um, that we uh, rolled out some extensions or are in the process of rolling out some extensions. So uh, we're working on the real-time chat. We have been working on the real-time collaboration, which is now available. Um, and the engagement automation, which is not publicly available yet, but uh, basically ready for testing. We are working on the gamification on management dashboard, which will be available. Uh, the forum view for discussions, which will be available. And we reworked the resource library, which is already available. So um, a lot of uh, extensions that have been worked on, but there's also a bunch of small things. So we still need to find a bit of a process, how to properly communicate it, it would completely like burst the frame of an hour or something that we have now to go through all of them. So a lot of it will be in the release notes, obviously. Um, we probably also gonna have to schedule some, um, some release notes for specific extensions to keep you up to date there, but uh, we, we're gonna think of a communication strategy to improve there in the future. Um, so um, Q4 updates, um, you can see is very simply like stripe through what has been already done. Um, obviously end of year, there are still some things left open. Centralized logging was scheduled earlier, but it is uh, gonna be finished. All of the core roadmap we expect to be done. Um, the designs for those all are ready. Um, there's also have been already a lot of work done, but uh, finishing touches are missing. And yeah, well, we still also have a bit time to finish it up. So um, I think that's a good good result. Um, and we really focused on improving forms for groups, uh, making it more understandable, easier to access, restructuring it. So um, you can expect like really that the back end and content management end of this will change. But also we hope that it will trigger a more engagement because it is just simply easier for people to create new content, new events, new ideas if you're using challenges or or things like that. So um, I hope that the impact of this will, pretty big, will be pretty big and that uh, everybody's going to like the new layout. If you're going to have any feedback or any uh, unclarities while, when we roll it out, uh, please feel free to contact us about it. We're going to love to hear it. Um, we did some user testing for this in, in advance. So we did some A-B testing for different things. We did some card sorting for where people perceive that certain um, things belong to. So there has been a lot of work done to restructure it properly, to give it a nice flow, um, and uh, to, to make everything as understandable as possible. 
Then uh, for the extensions, you can also see that a lot of things are done here, but also that a few things are marked red that, or postponed. So for example, the onboarding is something that we unfortunately had to drop a little bit um, because we ran into some impediments with the infrastructure building for the, for the webhook system, um, en engagement automation, the data layer, analytics, um, and thanks integration. Are those still um, on, um, more or less on track and will be delivered end of year, beginning of the new year. Um, same is for, uh, true for the sky as uh, default theme. This uh, transition has been more or less finished. The old is still uh, supported, but we're going to slowly transition into really removing this. Um, the last point here is um, the um, uh, automated deployment. So I'm gonna. I, I I took a bit of a step back and left the infrastructure part out of it in the future also. So only really highlights that it's gonna affect uh, you as a user of Open Social will be mentioned in the future. But um, we we really worked on it. Uh, we uh, we also took took people uh, um, on on the team to uh, dedicatedly focus on the infrastructure, on the stability, and on the deployment of Open Social. So I also hope that um, with Bram and uh, Robin focusing on this now, um, that this will improve in the future further. Um, then decoupled, uh, the return chat is uh, more or less done. So super excited for that. Uh, there is still some things to be polished, and the, but there are server automation and the, the, the functionality itself is, is, is ready to be tested. So we're gonna do some internal testing first end of year now, and then um, yeah, in theory, it's ready for testing and rolling out, though it's gonna be still a bit experimental. So you can see also later that there's still some polishing to be done in the next quarter. Accessibility has been done, big steps. I'm also going to come back to this later a bit. And um, yeah, design system is just a, on, on a continuous thing where CNU is really focusing on to improve uh, the consistency and um, yeah, reliability of the open social design system. Uh, lastly, I'm going to skip a lot of things here. I also mentioned a few, um, I want to mention a few downsides here. So there there have been a few postponements of things that we plan to do. So a member map for the management dashboard, for example, and the secret discussions have been postponed. Um, the e-learning uh, will be uh, ongoing also. So we are working on the course statistics. We have uh, the design for the flexible quiz results ready. So um, the focus on this extensions will be now in December or is now in December ongoing and will also be bit continued throughout January, which also is visible again in the extension roadmap later. Um, if you have any other questions to any of the specific features, uh, you can always contact Jamila or Stefano, as uh, who is uh, responsible for the project, uh, to, to get more information on how to use it, how to test it, what the precise functionality of those features are. So um, let's move on to the focus points of uh, uh, of uh, Q1 2021. Um, so I, I want to highlight here three things. And one is uh, we want to focus on the performance and stability of 10.0. Uh, Tempo Zero will be, bring quite some new cha uh, some changes and new features. And also we added a lot of extensions. We worked on a lot of basic things in those extensions or filling gaps, closing um, functionality that uh, feature gaps that were in, that were there and after a period of growth there has to come a com period of consolidation so we really want to take a step back and see where are structural issues in the product um, and uh, also listen to the feedback that we got over the last month and really want to tackle tackle uh, fundamental things there so um, one of this is uh, like polishing the and, and another thing of in the terms of consolidation is polishing the engagement automation and gamification so after spending a whole quarter of building the infrastructure, uh, the architecture for this, uh, concepting, design, discussions, we really want to let uh, the new engines shine and want to make sure that this gets like uh, the depth it deserves and that it also gets the application it deserves. Going to tell a bit about this more when we come to the roadmap part. Um, and a third goal is, is the communication of open social. So communication is key, especially in a social context that we are all moving in and um, we got also feedback um, from uh, from Greenpeace and the UN that um, there is the work on the notification system to be done, and we agree fully on this and really want to focus on this. So it's gonna get gets a it's gonna get a 
like fundamental overhaul. Uh, we're gonna start from scratch there, uh, analyzing what notifications we are sending out, where do we want to aggregate, uh, how should this, um, how should this, um, it, uh, the copy look like. Uh, really, really the fundamental things there, and um, hope that after this quarter we added all gaps there, all. Um, um, all structural things there that 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 the system needs to really focus on um, on the uh, open social um, uh, client basis. So um, let's move to the actual uh, roadmaps. Uh, we're going to start with the core. Uh, going to move to extensions and then to the decoupled roadmap. Um, for the core, um, I posted again the, the overall goals that we set for each of those uh, products of Open Social. So um, we talked about this already in the first uh, session a bit. The core should be really the base for the SaaS and for the open source product. This means it needs to be stable, secure, feature rich. So this really also fits into the context of consolidation, of um, rethinking basic uh, um, and, uh, structures and um, improving the functionality so that everything works as stable and secure as possible. Um, then connection with the open source community, uh, future proof by including Drupal 9 support and include high value Drupal features. I think this is also something that you're gonna see back. Uh, we are continuously working on Drupal 9 in the background. I'm not gonna point it out too specifically, but it is an ongoing, ongoing um, effort from our side and we're also working on contributing back to the to the community by, for example, with a bigger effort to contribute back to the group module. Um, make sure the user has a good open social experience. So teaching people uh, interfaces, making interfaces more simple and so forth. So I think all of those three overall goals that the core product should serve are um, also coming back here again. So first step is going to be the performance, as I already mentioned. So we researched how to improve performance of open social for functionalities we added. So this is really consolidation. Um, what you can see, obviously, here that January looks very empty. It's not. I'm going to promise you the core team is very busy here uh, preparing, testing, and rolling out the 10.0 update. So um, this is why here a lot of room is blocked and not new features are added. But uh, this this usually takes uh, really like hundreds of hours to test the uh, open social core update on all different versions on all different platforms with all different extensions and so forth. So for the performance, um, we're looking a at a stable, fast email sending. So this is obviously also the base for all the notification changes we're gonna do to make sure that um, this is really. Uh, the notification batching is improved, that the engine behind this is improved, that uh, it's clearer when notifications are sent out. We also see growing engagement, which is awesome on Spark Blue, on uh, the Greenpeace platforms, on Milieu Defense, on so many other installations. Um, so this is just a problem you run into with the success that you really test your scalability of your systems. And there we see some, some, uh, some cracks here and there that we're gonna patch now. Um, another per, uh, the other two, I don't want to go too much into the technicalities now, but we're going to work with uh, smart private files. So we added a lot of visual platforms with the dashboards. We see that people use it very visually with a lot of imaging, with a lot of um, uh, big uh, pictures that are really making the dashboards look really awesome. But this is very heavy on loading um, for a lot of pages, especially if the bandwidth is not that big or if you're on smart devices or anything else. So um, we're gonna work with the private files there to really improve the loading times of those pages that have a lot of images. That's also true for streams or anything else where you see like overview pages with a lot of images. Um, and another thing is a PSH, a PSH proxy for public visitors. So to uh, basically cap off the people who are not locked in, um, we're gonna implement some smart technology to uh, basically not have impact on this server uh, server service for the people who logged in. So this is gonna be a bit split and helps also with loading times for all users. 
Um, then further, as I said, notification engine, here we're really going to look into the basics, consolidate the triggers for the notification and activity triggers. So this is important to understand. Um, I think a lot of people know, but I want to reiterate that basically the activity stream is a notification. So everything you see on the activity stream belongs, is, is powered by this notification engine. And this overhauling one means also overhauling the other. Um, in, this obviously adds a little bit of work for us, but it's also increasing the impact it's going to have on the on the on the product. So uh, first step there, consolidating what is consolidating in this case, really looking into where do we send the notifications and c uh, cross referencing this with all uh, extensions that we build, with all features that we build, with all uh, things we added. We're going to add in 10.0 a follow taxonomy feature. Uh, we see that this adds a lot of engagement, but also a lot of notifications. So making sure that this is a consistent, um, uh, that this, we send out consistent notifications, but also within the notifications and consistent messaging and clear linkages. We also got some feedback there that this can be improved. But we also did, I think, some very good improvements for comments and posts. So those have to be continued through all entity types. Um, building on this, then the next step is the improved aggregation. Um, considering that we have then a solid base, uh, we want to do. We want to go the next step and make sure that all of those different notification types work well together. That you have, uh, for example, if you have an item you are following, you are the author of, um, you left a comment, somebody replies, and you follow the taxonomy behind it. This is a lot of different triggers that interact with each other, where you need to weigh them, where you need to rank them, and then you need to decide which trigger is the most relevant one, which trigger will convince the person to come back to this piece of content and further engage with it. So this is also a lot of concepting work that's needed to be done there and um, uh, where we for sure going to reach out uh, to, to get some feedback and to, um, to talk with the community to see which are uh, really relevant triggers. Where do you see as open social clients um, options to trigger more engagement versus less relevant um, engagement triggers? Um, the next one is the targeted communication. So um, it's also a bit in that ballpark, but um, yeah, so this is improved queuing processing for notifications, uh, a bit technical, but in, 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 in principle also again for the notification engine. But um, we also want to use this target communication as an overall theme, which we're going to add a um, few other features into the next quarters for um, which is about how does open social batches communication, how does it target certain, um, certain uh, user groups and how do we send out those notifications? So maybe in the future also you could think about uh, automated digests or things like this. This all fun falls under the target communication um, theme for open social. And as I already mentioned, the Drupal work, uh, we're contributing back to the Drupal uh, group module for improvements. There's gotta be quite a substantial push for that. Um, we are in contact there with um, Christian, who's the main maintainer of the uh, groups module. So really excited that we that we can do that. Uh, we're working also. We also um, help like most of you already seen probably the new Jin theme that we're using as the admin theme in the back end. So we're also contributing back to that. So we really um, um, made it a point to have some reserve time within the core team to sponsor work we're doing there back. Um, there are some sponsored things. So this is like still a bit spotty. That's also true for the extension roadmap. There is going to be a few more things that going to come there. Um, it's a bit early because of the Christmas time. We put this meeting a bit earlier than we would have liked to. So unfortunately, not all, especially the sponsored things are not completely um, fi final yet, but you can um, expect updates there in the, in the future. Um, so uh, accessibility ongoing thing, we're going to have a third round of improvements. Um, again, I promise this I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back again later to this. Um, and um, notification engine, uh, something we going to add to the core product. I hope it's still going to make 10.0 that we're going to set that there's a global setting for notification frequency. So all, also in this overall theme of improving the notification context, um, site managers can then set 
for each notification type if it should be sent in which frequency it should be sent so immediately daily weekly never um, which helps to target the stream or to to direct the stream of notifications that are sent out a bit more um, fitted to the specific purpose of a platform and then uh, role management. So we're gonna look into role management a bit further. We already added as an extension, the taxonomy manager. We also gonna add another role um, that is gonna be the role manager. So basically if you add a custom role to the platform, the person will ex get access only to this role, um, uh, everything that is related to this specific role. Um, I, 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 I don't wanna get too much into the details here, but it's, uh, I think for everyone who is using the custom um, for is using custom content or custom um, sorry custom roles, this is going to be super interesting. I'm um, so make sure that you uh, ask for more information there. Um, so then we're going to move on to the extensions. Uh, so again, also here the goals I posted them again here. So to to remind everyone, um, we want to be with uh, extensions really adaptable to fit different verticals so to fit different needs of platforms we uh, know that the client base of open social is very diverse um, we have everything over communities uh, volunteering platforms or um, associations that are really uh, trying to uh, reach out to members um, and to to make it to make sure that this extensions use the social core of open social and even more target uh, or fit the community to the target of, of the community. Um, the features, yeah, as I said, should should make sure that they are um, that open social is more specific and uh, gives it a better, better niche fit. And um, the main focus will be on value generating features. So measurable value that can come out of this um, this platform. Um, oh yeah, actually, yeah, main theme security. So this is here in the product extension because it is an extension, it's a third party tool we're gonna use, but we're gonna improve like preventing spam attacks or the, increase the capability of open source to defend against spam attack on different variables based on uh, geolocation of the attackers, based on certain keywords, based on known addresses, known ID addresses and such. So this will be possible to enable for open social as an additional tool in the toolbox. Um, we're gonna work on the app so i think this is something that's very important which of more climb and uh, so we're gonna add the push, push messaging to all the apps that we developed and uh, we're also gonna work on yeah some continuous improvement for a more uh, native experience on the app and yeah the one to rule them all so this is uh, not relevant i think for most users that do want to have a completely own branded app but we see also that the need for some tier one and tier two clients um that maybe um don't have the budget to completely uh, develop their own app is like con connected with kind of yeah, quite some maintenance um, and with an own development account, we're going to publish an app that's going to be under our development account. And then within the installation of the open social app, you can choose your own um, instance of open social and connect it to this. So like you can think a bit about it. I, I think most people know Slack, like Slack does this, for example, you download not your own Slack installation, but you own, download the general Slack app and then connect it to different, in, different instances. So this is gonna um, ease a bit on the development um, of it, on the deployment costs and on the maintenance costs, but obviously to the costs of like fully branded uh, material. Um, um, then uh, another thing is, uh, so you saw a little bit overrun and postponement in the webhooks or engagement automation um, module. So we still wanna, as I mentioned at the beginning, focus on that and there's gonna be a lot of focus on that for this quarter. So um, the, I specified the onboarding a bit more here. So this is basically onboarding, come, come back. So user engagement automation for trigger help and tooltips. Uh, what this basically means is that we want to use the engagement automation tool. So this act action condition trigger system to say if a user comes to the first time to a page, trigger this specific action. Or if a user didn't fill out his profile after X amount of time, 
trigger this action. So this way, this way you can really get, you get like specific action and triggers for this engagement automation to um, set up like a somewhat targeted um, onboarding process or to help people discover high value feature for your community or guide them to more, um, more information they can find about certain certain uh, features. Um, another thing in this whole webhook engagement automation context is going to be the outgoing webhooks third party integration. So this is going to be a base story for, for example, a Sapir integration in the future, but also if, uh, comp if an organization wants to hook onto the system and pull any like uh, um, community events into um, other other systems, uh, this will be more or less like possible with this. So um, with this, we're gonna open up um, a lot of functionality, I think, for open source world to really target into what generates value for you as a client on open social on a very specific level. So do we wanna focus on events and really push the engagement there on the discussions or whatever, um, whatever is important for your community? Then related to this, as it runs on the same engine, but somewhat different application is the gamification. So the thanks integration is still continuing there. Um, we are hoping to finish our proof of concept uh, this year, but then the rollout and um, first deployment to live, still gonna take a bit of January. And uh, there's also gonna be a follow-up web, follow webinar where uh, probably Miesko and me are gonna talk about things and open social and in general gamification concepts, blockchain concepts. So be sure to join. Um, I think it's gonna be super interesting. Um, and also on a, on a really general level about blockchains and how to use it uh, in a social context. So not only in an open social context, but low fundamental level, a conceptual level. And um, then two specific applications for this gamification where we want to improve on the squatter is, so uh, for the first one, sorry, this is uh, fast here. <laughs> so we really worked on, um, uh, on the leaderboard, adding um, um, the content manager side, basically, or community management side of the gamification. So the goal for this first proof of concept of this, for this first edition of the gamification feature in open social is going to be on identifying high value users, identifying who performs desirable actions as um, determined by the site managers or community managers, and how can you stimulate that those people are becoming like super users for you, ambassadors that really stimulate further engagement and that also pull the whole community with them in in, uh, in that and um, but the second part of this is obviously then also an outward facing so how can we visualize that those people are the super user or are those people who perform uh, beneficial actions to the community and that's obviously partially through um, user levels but also through badges or through generally like tokens of appreciations they can get. This is going to be the first step. The, the next step could be then also in the future uh, giving out more permissions or things like that. So those are basically the three steps that we want to take there. Internal identification of those users, um, then visualization of those users and then a, as a third follow-up uh, actual uh, implications for usage. And then um, as another part, so <laughs> higher logic, um, combine multiple triggers and actions. Um, at the moment, the system is a bit rigid and you can design one action to one, uh, one trigger. So basically the user does that, this happens. But for a gamification module, you probably want to go a bit more in depth or you wanna do a sort of modular approach where you can say like five, uh, so the beginner, a beginner's batch is liking five contents, creating uh, one content yourself and joining a group. And then a medium level batch is obviously building up on this. So you have a set of multiple triggers that a user need to fulfill to have one outcome in this case, getting a batch. So we want to like, just increase the depth and flexibility of, this, uh, of the engine that is powering the gamification 
And with this also, by the way, then the en engine that powers the engagement automation. So really connecting multiple triggers and or multiple actions with each other. Then um, for the uh, sponsored part, again, <laughs> some gaps here. Um, but the e-learning part is already fixed, so we're going to work on reworking the parts creation. Um, also, there, a fundamental step back and see, okay, we're gonna add, we added this, uh, this quarter functionality for statistics, for the statistics, for the quiz. Um, and uh, with this, there were also some designs how to generally improve the forms and, um, and creation steps of this, and this will be worked on next sprint. Um, there is a um, certain there's an initiative for user anonymity. So, uh, how can you make sure that a user's personal data is secure on the platform without um, endangering the recognizability of a of a user? So, there is an important concept of uh, recognizability versus anonymity. So, yes, you I don't want to show who I am in the real world, but I want to be consistently known as user X on the platform because only this way you create meaningful engagement with each other. If you know that the person that answered you is the same person that did something else or that you engage with on another discussion. And um, features that the sector instead of a profile field upload or can be by, by the way also used simultaneously uh, segmentation of users on a more granular uh, level. Um, so, basically, the community and a siloed community, and they, there's only certain overlap between those communities. So, we started this process already with the custom user roles, and um, and for this uh, for this we're gonna uh, on this path we're gonna continue basically with this um to make sure that this is even more separated that people from silo a cannot find people from silo b except if they are put together in a in a separate space um and then also yeah as i mentioned hiding of profile fields and so forth so this is also uh, over the siloing out that you can really say um i wanna I want to enforce that people always hide their phone numbers or always hide their location, even though they have to enter it or should enter it for administrative purposes. But I really want to make sure that this is going to kept uh, private for people and that they are protected from themselves, basically. So we're going to work on, on, on really improving how to set this on a global level, how to set this on an individual level, and how to enforce it. Um, yeah, there, there is a lot of other discussion ongoing, but I didn't also want to include things now that are not set in stone yet. Um, again, we're going to keep you updated about um, uh, other extensions that are going to be added to the roadmap by projects, by input from other clients or from partners from us. Um, and we, uh, yeah, we're really going to um, try to, to keep this uh, as up to date as possible on, on community talks. So going to the going to the decoupled part, I uh, promised I'm going to come back to the chat. So there is uh, some things that we're going to still have to do. So the rollout's going to happen beginning of January, and then from there we're going to add uh, the a chat um, a chat moderator. Uh, at the moment, the creator of the chat can uh, invite uh, extra people, but there is some additional functionality that's going to come with the real time chat. For example, closing the chat for commenting of other people, defining who can view uh, and view chats who can start new threads and chat and so forth, but also appointing other people as chat moderators. Additionally, we want to add the chat to events and groups as a default that you can start a group or an event chat, basically similar to the feature that we already have by sending bulk emails for a certain event. You can just bulk add a whole event to one chat where they then can discuss uh, new events occurring in or new new uh, uh, updates occurring for a certain event and so forth. Uh, blocking users also something that's really important. It's a bit here on the end. It might gonna shift again actually probably to the beginning of January uh, so that you can really 
target specific users that you don't want to interact with on the platform. Uh, further, yeah, some backend things, uh, design system, as I mentioned before, is an ongoing process, but also after that, the, the, the base, this is going to be the basic basis for opening up open social to con connecting open social with GraphQL to other uh, systems. So the Q2, Q2 uh, step going to be that we look into uh, how can content, events, groups, and so forth um, be connected or shared via GraphQL with, with other systems. Um, so um, those were the roadmaps per different initiatives. So as said at the beginning, uh, we have some other projects we are working on that are not per se precisely defined one roadmap item, but which I still want to mention. Um, as I said at the beginning, Drupal 9 will be a continuous effort where we are working on, where all the teams are going to be involved, where we split up uh, responsibilities. This quarter, we will focus on OS ex extension compatibility to Drupal 9. Um, That's going to be the next step. After that, for example, we need to, uh, or we also want to make sure that all the contrib modules open social uses are Drupal 9 ready, and we're going to try to contribute back there to, to the uh, Drupal community. Further, the automated deployments, um, we will make sure that the uh, updates are smoother, that the deployment is more stable, that there is an improvement in the whole infrastructure behind Open Social. As I said, we uh, created a dedicated team in the last three months for this that is really looking into this. And um, here's the update for the continuous accessibility improvements. So we, with a partner of ours, uh, we tested, we had an official test running over one of the open social client, uh, installations, which uses Skype. So this is probably somewhat or more or less actually replicable for all um, other open social installations that's, that use the Skype theme. Um, and there we have a test score from 80, 38 or 50 items for the AA standard of the WCAG. Um, and um, so there's a A, double A, and triple A standard, and the double A is usually recognized as, as being accessible. Um, so this is this sounds quite that we are quite off 12 points, but it is actually closer than it sounds. So there are some things where like really small things are preventing us from being there. There are some things also which is which are hard for us to tackle because they depend on client choices um, or on implementation choices, uh, contrast in, in, in certain color settings and so forth. So another step next to the technical part that we want to take there is um, really also looking from a, a customer success management point and from an implementation point on guidelines, how to set up open social that those points that are influenced by each community and by each implementation itself can be set up as, as accessible as possible. Um, another interesting thing um, that we are doing currently with uh, Milieu Defenses, so also thanks for that, is uh, Open Social as Authentication Provider. Um, there is no plan directly to feature this back or to have an extension for this or something like this, but I wanted to mention it anyways because uh, usually we connect Open Social to leverage a single sign on connection or something, some other program as a source of authentication. But in this case, we're actually going to use Open Social to access another tool, in this case, Nextcloud, uh, which is like an open source uh, drive version. So and based on open social permission or given permissions given out in open social, people can uh, then log in on Nextcloud and they get access to certain areas of this. So a content manager, for example, might see more than a normal user or a normal user doesn't have access at all. And only if you are in group X, you get access to this. I think there are a lot of applications and there are some, I, I know there are some use cases that could benefit from this. Um, this is hard to replicate one-on-one -on -one or to say, oh, we have now an extension for this, but I think it's interesting to look into this and maybe leverage the, the research that we're doing in that, uh, that terms for other use cases. 
Um, I, I wanted to give a quick feature outlook. Uh, so um, there is a lot of things going on. Again, we have another <laughs> webinar beginning of the year, looking more into what's going to come for 2021. I already talked a little bit about it the last time. Um, and uh, we really want to look then into what are the global items that are going to happen for the next year and maybe even longer. And but uh, so we are starting a research, for example, for payments uh, or for monetization in general. So how can um, how can we with which tool will we connect? Uh, what are actually the items that bring the most value to communities? Should we focus on ticketing, on donations, and so forth? So there's a lot of research to be done, a lot of uh, uh, technical and conceptual work advan in advance. So we're going to focus on this already this quarter and then hopefully start the implementation later this year. As I said, the native app, this is an ongoing process. We are moving forward and developing a more native concept, uh, adding new features there step by step. And um, also, as I said, this one app to rule them all approach for um, will be accessible at one point. Um, yeah. I think that's it for now. Uh, Luca, any questions? I feel, I feel very privileged to, uh, to have the chance to ask <laughs> the only question of this webinar. <laughs> uh, my question is one, uh, thank you, Moritz. Uh, very comprehensive, very aligned with, with the last one. Very good. Also, I see, I see a continuation flow. My question is more on a broader sense. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would have to like sum up the 2021 of open social of the product. Where would, what would you like? Yeah, what would you what would you say is the vision for 2021 for the whole year? Yeah, I think I think a big part of it is um, like a consolidation and uh, stabilization. Um, I think that we are at a point with open social where we really see uh, what the product can do and how uh, we have great engagement features. I think on a content base, we're really solid. Uh, the dashboard was a great addition that gave a lot of opportunities to build uh, flows and site structures as you need. And now you just need to take all of those ingredients that on its own deliver value and make sure that they are combined that they connect in each other, that they overlap, that they guide from one point to the other, that there are no dead ends in the product. Um, and I think this is really going to be, if I look at a concept point, a, a big theme for open social to, to make, make it like a really round finished, uh, finished thing that combines all of the strengths that we have into this. Another thing is for sure, it, on, on a more backend level, um, infrastructure work, uh, improving, uh, improving the performance, scalability, the decoupled process and so forth. This will all add towards uh, better, uh, better loading times, better user, uh, like uh, per perceived loading times to better stability, uh, more frequent updates. And on a, I think also um, on a um, feature level, we uh, we really want to look into um, how how can we yeah open up social towards uh, external tools, uh, create this hub that we that we envision with the GraphQL, with webhooks, um, and connect and embed open social into the existing uh, product landscapes of our clients. Thank you. <laughs> um, great. Then, um, yeah, I think more about this also, as I said, beginning of the next year. Um, we're gonna really focus on this further. Um, or to to uh, to make sure that we uh, that we communicate this the strategy properly that we can also highlight some of the initiatives we are taking and uh, some of the technologies we chose um, I'm probably going to sit down with Bram together in this webinar and um, also highlight a bit more technical choices uh, being made and uh, tooling and things like that. So we want to take a bit of broader look on 2021 and uh, vision of open social there. 
Great. Then um, thank you both for your uh, um, <laughs> attention, uh, for the questions, and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Yes. And thank you all who are watching now. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or contact your customer success manager. Thanks so much, Luca. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.